when I left Cleveland this morning, it was pretty clear that a lot of Republicans are still feeling that good old convention high after the grand finale of Donald Trump's nomination party last night. Here to explore a variety of things, including how long that euphoria might last and how it could affect poll numbers in the coming days, as our Bloomberg politics analyst, Ken Goldstein, who joins us from Washington. So, Ken, we've got now three cycles in a row, including this one, with back-to-back -back conventions. Uh, which means whatever bounce Republicans get could be squashed by Hillary Clinton and Amy running men in their convention. So what are the prospects of Republicans getting not just a, an artificial bounce over the next couple days, but something that could endure into the August and then the fall? Well, as, as, as you said, there's, 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 there's been a change that convention bounces are real and they do absolutely matter. But I remember the first campaign I covered was 1988, and George H.W. Bush went from seven down to four up after the convention. And probably a number you remember really well, covering Clinton's in, Clinton in 92, he went up 14 percentage points after his, after his New York convention. We are not going to see numbers like that. And what we saw in the last couple of elections was more numbers in the one or two range. But even if it is only a one, two, or three range, you know, people like me have spent a lot of time all year saying don't pay attention to the polls. But the polls that we're going to see, maybe not here in this weekend because there's not enough time between the Republican convention and the start of the Democratic convention, but those polls that we see right after the Democratic convention are really going to matter and structure this race going forward. Ken, there's obviously a major disparity between the amount of money spent between Clinton and Trump and the amount of TV campaign ads run. Uh, Trump insists that that disparity is not going to hurt him. Is, is he right? It's sort of sad for me. Right? I don't get to come and talk about ads because Trump's not spending money on, on ads. And Hillary's, you know, Hillary Clinton has spent this over $60 million along with priorities over the last couple months. So listen, um, there's sort of a good news, bad news here. So if I was the Trump campaign and I was saying, look, I've been outspent. I've literally had nothing on the air, a couple million from the NRA in these battleground states. And there doesn't seem to have been much of an impact. And if you are going to see an impact of ads, you're going to see an impact of ads when one side's up and the other side is, is completely completely down. But you know, we have seen times when it matters. If you remember, and again, it was a, it was a different time. Conventions were, uh, were, they were at the end of the summer in 2012. But Mitt Romney unexplicably went down during the the week of the Republican convention, the week of the Democratic convention, and even a couple days after the Democratic convention. So a lot going on, but it's clear that's when some major numbers moved in the 2012 race, and Romney never really got it back after that. So Ken, kind of crazy, the poll mad media world that a big event occurs like last night, uh, and, and people like us go on TV and speculate wildly about was the speech good or not, and there's very little data to back it up. CNN did what they described as an instant poll uh, of people who watched the speech and asked uh, the question, for instance, as a bunch of questions, reaction to Trump's speech of people who watched it, very positive, 57 percent. They asked people, uh, will, will the speech move the U.S. in the right direction? After the speech, 73% said yes as compared to before 60%. The Trump campaign has been touting this poll all day. Based on the methodology, the questions, and, and comparable questions in the past, is this poll good news for the Trump campaign in any way? It's, it's, it's no news for the Trump campaign. Um, listen, if you're, if you're taking a sample of people who watched the speech, what sort of people watched the speech? It was not undecided voters. It was people who are fans, um, and fans of Trump or fans of the Republican Party. And so uh, if he didn't get that number, and actually I might even be a little bit disappointed if I was Trump that that number wasn't even higher given the population that was likely sampled there. Um, instant polls are always dangerous because you're not exactly sure who you're talking to and you don't, you don't do a lot of the callbacks. But uh, an instant poll, like at a debate, I would put more into than an instant poll after a convention speech, which draws a particular sort of person. Quick one here. The, the risk that Trump doesn't come out of this convention with a bounce after Clinton, after, after this one, is there a risk that, that he flatlines here? Yeah, listen, I mean, bounces rely on 
having one-sided, completely positive conventions. And as your discussion for much of the show before talked about, at best, there's debate about whether it was all good news for him. And also, bounces also tend to, to, to be more pronounced when people are learning something new. And listen, we have two candidates, well, Trump and Hillary Clinton, who are pretty well known, which could mitigate the bounce, and aren't particularly well loved. So you need someone who's, there's potential for love and not well known, and there seems low potential for love, and they're already pretty well known.